Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to MDLR Fishing. Today I just wanted to share with y'all a new product that I just bought. Well, it's sort of new. This is new, these aren't. These are all the boots that I have purchased from Sims. And uh, I just, I love this one right here so much so that I wanted to share it with y'all. Uh, this is the flyweight boot. It's for weighting use, however, I love them so much because they're very comfortable, super light, which is hence its name, flyweight. Uh, that's the main reason why I actually use it for like my jetty boots, my uh, wade fishing boot. And uh, yeah, um, these things are perfect when you pair them up with some cleats from Sims. So all together, everything just works together really well. That right there is the hard bite cleats, you got two types, studs and uh, an actual like claw type. They're not designed for salt water. However, because of uh, what it provides for me out there, I use it in the salt and you can kind of tell by this, my old jetty boot, all of that right there, white corrosion on the grommets, that's what happens. This right here is a saltwater wading boot, which I cannot stand, but these grommets are corrosion proof and these are you know, designed for the salt. However, uh, it's like wearing a big old piece of PVC. They do not bend. They hurt your feet whenever you're out there on the water for hours upon hours. And uh, yeah, they just suck. These right here are a wading sneaker. These are not designed to put like your neoprene booties into them. It's just, you put wading socks on and then you go out there and then you wade. Your feet are gonna get wet. So depending on how much time you spend in the water, these guys will let your feet get wrinkled. I do not recommend these. Again, it's a saltwater wading sneaker. What's gonna happen is that right there was the rubber outsole and yeah, the adhesive basically separated from the cushiony part, and so we had to essentially rip them off on both of the sneakers. You're stepping on rocks. They have algae, especially in the summertime. Uh, you know how slippery that stuff can be. And these have provided the absolute best footing possible that you can have confidence to go down to the water's edge, especially on a slant, which is the way our rocks tend to um, be on our jetties on the Texas coast. And you can step down there with a lot of confidence that you're not gonna slip. It's not 100% foolproof, so it doesn't mean like, okay, these guys are magnets, they're gonna stick to the rocks. You still gotta use a little common sense whenever you're traversing those things, especially to net your fish or release your fish. Um, but for the most part, the most comfortable solution to being able to get some traction on those granite rocks or any kind of rock for that matter, this is the way to go. The cleats are very expensive. I'd imagine you can just purchase a package of them from Sims and then try to screw it into your favorite pair of shoes. But the problem that you're gonna run into is the fastening hardware, the screws themselves may go all the way through the bottom of the sole and end up like poking your feet. You can see that looks to be about close to uh, maybe in between a half inch to three quarters of an inch in length. And yeah, I don't know that I would want that poking into my foot if I was to decide to just go the uh, cheaper route and use any shoes that you want. Um, these are specifically designed to work with those cleats. So let's try to get the angle and the lighting perfect. You can see all of these little circles right here, those are indicators on where to put your cleats. And um, when you feel it, there's a, I don't know if it's a plate, I'd imagine Sims has something in there to kind of help grip all of that uh, hardware, them screws. And these are Vibram soles, the plastic is very, very rugged and durable, but the tread on the boot itself is it, it bends easy. Um, now these boots are not designed to go with the hard bite cleat. They're supposed to be used 
with the studs. At least that's what the Sims website indicates. And the main reason is because when you try to put these cleats on, they don't fit perfectly and line up with the indicators on where you're supposed to place uh, each individual cleat. So what I have to do is take my knife and carve out some of the tread, which I did over here, um, which is very hard to do. It's time consuming, but I love these. They provide more traction and grip this particular style versus the stud. Obviously, more surface area means that you're going to have more contact with the rocks and these guys just grip like a darn mountain goat. The reason why I use these is because I've tried various other methods um, like the snowshoes, the tracks, I think they're called tracks. And it, what it is, it's a rubber piece with metal that goes over the bottom of your boot and they tighten with tensioners or some type of fastening equipment. So what you're doing is just basically adding another layer down here that's going to be tightened up and it's got the cleats in them. And uh, those, what I have found, because I've used them before, uh, it's not sure footing. So whenever you're on the rock itself and you're gripping it, that's a lot of weight. Uh, whatever you weigh, that pressure is pushing down. Now those fasteners can't completely hold it uh, the cleat itself to the boot, uh, there's a lot of stretch and give. So what ends up happening, my hand is the cleat itself and it's fastened to the bottom of the boot. The boot slides and just that little bit of slip just makes it uncomfortable. It doesn't give you the warm and fuzzy that you have 100% traction and just through time, uh, the little fastening portion of those, whatever it is that you're going to go with, they wear out and um, it's just uncomfortable. The other thing that I have seen people wearing out there at the jetties, uh, baseball cleats with the metal cleats at the bottom. Those only provide certain points of traction at the bottom and uh, it's very awkward whenever you're walking on them because they're very high off the ground. These are like, I mean, they're designed to work with these all of Sims's boots and they're very low to the tread. So it doesn't feel like you're walking on just six points, which six, seven, eight, ten, 10, whatever the number is for each particular style cleat. It does not feel like you're walking on pressure points. And uh, I've seen golf shoes, whatever you can come up with to actually go out there and fish them rocks with, I've seen them and it just looks uncomfortable and anything that's going to provide comfort is a plus in my book especially whenever you're spending five to eight hours on the water for each trip this in my opinion is definitely the way to go i stand nothing to gain by talking to you all about these boots just wanted to show you what it is that i am using out there and how it works uh, it, how long it's lasted and uh, yeah, it's my solution. That's why you're seeing me in my jetty fishing videos anywhere off of the bank that rocks are involved. Uh, I have really great footing and it's all because of these boots right here. Um, if you were to buy the new updated saltwater boots, you can see, let's try to find the little, here we go right here. That's the best one because it's clean. You have that little dot right there that's the same thing that actually uh, where the cleat uh, screws into. It's the same exact thing. All of Sims's wading boots have them. It's a, a great system to use. And yeah, uh, very tough to put these things on. So I'm going to finish these guys up. Something that you need to consider whenever you're going to purchase a pair of Sims wading boots is the sizing so waiting i'm gonna actually purchase a size 12 but being that i do wear this same exact boot for just walking on the jetty rocks and i don't have a neoprene booty on that's gonna have to fit inside this big boot i have to go down two sizes for just like a regular style shoe so waiting two sizes up for me to a 12 and that's gonna fit the booty and just regular shoes, it's gonna be a size 10 because they do come a little bit large. 
yeah, so that's going to do it, y'all. Just wanted to let y'all know about the new Jetty boots that we've got on the channel. And if you found this one entertaining or educational and you want to help the channel out, click that thumbs up button. Click the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and you want to see more content as I drop it. Uh, I do appreciate it. Until next time, tight lines, everyone.